All right, I'm Mary Lynn Brinkowitz, Director of Communications and Marketing for FBLA. And again, welcome to our 2024-2025 year program, your kickoff for advisors. This is the first of a series of monthly advisor webinars that we'll be holding throughout the year. So uh, really glad that you are with us for this and welcome back uh, to the new school year. So we wanna share with you a video that our national officers, our high school national officers put together last month when they were here um, in Reston, Virginia at the National Center getting training and getting ready for the new school year. So we're gonna play this now. This is also was in the advisor alert yesterday. It's on our social media as well. Um, but again, just a quick welcome uh, from the high school officers. the 2024 through 2025 program year. We want to share some of the fantastic opportunities coming up in FBLA. Start your year off by planning your program of work. Our champion chapter program makes it easy by giving you month by month ideas for how to get your chapter on track to success and earn national recognition. Then be sure to attend our National Ball Leadership Conference on November 8th and 9th in Columbus, Ohio. You'll have a chance to meet representatives from colleges and universities, network with other members from around the country, compete in an open event, and deepen your understanding of leadership through our interactive workshops. During February, we'll host FBLA Week, our annual celebration of all things FBLA. A toolkit later this fall will offer ideas on how to make the most of this occasion. As we prepare for competitions, state conferences, and the National Leadership Conference in Anaheim next June, follow us on social media for the latest FBLA news and information throughout the year. We're so glad that you're part of FBLA. Now, have a wonderful school year. All right, so we get just a quick hello from the high school national officers as they kick off the new school year and we hope you'll share that with your students as you welcome them back to class. So oops, that was, it was great but we don't need to see it twice. Um, let's go ahead and I want to turn it over to Lisa Smothers, uh, our Director of Membership for FBLA who's going to host this evening session. Lisa. Thanks, Mary Lynn. Good evening, everybody. I'm glad to see so many of you on tonight and welcome back to the new school year. I always like to start talking about the life cycle of FBLA as, as our program year goes from August 1st to July 31st. So if you can see this in August through October, we start the year with Summer Starter, which some of you have even finished already. Wow, it hasn't even started. I'm amazed and shaping success. We have a lot of partner programs and don't forget the Dress to Impress scholarship. But between August and October, we have about 80,000 of members come in. November through February is really one of our busier months. We start service season and we have our first national celebration, American Enterprise Day, which we'll talk about later. We have the spring virtual business challenge, some more challenges, but the big things in February are CTE month and FBLA week. And in November, of course, we have our fall conferences. When we're looking at November through February, you're looking at a total of 160,000 members. Then when we go into March through May, that's really where we get the last of our members. Once we get to May, we really don't have too much more coming in. So you have 100 and about 190,000 members, which is about where we ended out last year. So when you get into this part of FBLA, you're focusing on the state leadership conference, um, the scholarships for the NLC, the BAA deadline, outstanding chapter um, for collegiate, champion chapter for high school and middle school. Then from June to July, of course, we have our National Leadership Conference, again, which we'll talk about later. If you have national officers that get elected, national officer training follows, and then the year-end close is on July 31st. So why did I show this to you? Well, I think it's important in order for your students to get benefits, the earlier you get your dues in and pay them, the more benefits they get. Because when you look at it, if you pay on August 1st or you pay on January 31st, you only have your membership until July 31st. So again, it runs just like a school year does. So I also always like to start with the mission and you've all seen this on our website and I always relate back to this 
when I first started working here at the National Center, and I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, but one of our, my first duties was to work with the national officers and take them to the Department of Education, and they got to speak to the Secretary of Education. First thing she asked, what was the mission? Not one national officer could tell her what the mission was. So with a little prodding, we got through it, but then they wanted, then they couldn't understand what it meant. So it's not only that they need to know the mission, they also need to understand that it really prepares them for the real world, that exploration behind uh, beyond the classroom and the leadership skills. When you're looking for sponsorships or when you're talking to businesses or even your school board, one of the first things they're going to want to know is the mission. And that always sets you up for success. Moving on, we do have a new and updated pledge this year. This is great because our pledge hadn't been updated since the 50s. So as you all know, language changes. And so this really goes along with um, our mission and it fits right in. So it moves us right into the modern world. What's good about this and where you can use this is a lot of you are probably talk, thinking about your new members and recruiting your new members. And a lot of chapters have a new induction ceremony. So this is one thing that you can have them do is say the pledge as they become members. Of course, we've, we, we've talked about our theme. It's a great theme. It's dare to dream, dare to lead. That kind of sets you up for a lot of different things. But throughout the year, I would encourage you to stress this theme to the students because really, to me, it's what FBLA is all about. You're learning about things and you're gaining on your leadership skills to prepare you for a future career. One of the best things that we have on our national website at www.fbla.org is the Advisor Resource Center. So if you're on the home page, you scroll down and you'll see Advisor Resource Center and you'll click on it. There's things for all divisions, but then you can click on the different divisions, middle school, high school, or collegiate, and it will give you the different things. I think some of the most important things that are on this that will help you start the year is that we have a digital handbook. And so if you look at the arrow, it's pointing to that. The thing is, is when you do that link, you do have to sign in and F to FBLA Connect because it's behind that firewall, but that's gonna give you everything that you need to start the year. It's gonna guide you with what you should be working on with your officers, how you develop your program of work, how you do your committees, doing a point system, talking to your administrators. So that's probably one of the first things, if I were you, that I would take a look at. You also have your champion chapter poster for the high school and the middle school merit award has been rebranded as the champion chapter. It's just different activities and different things with that. You'll also see back by popular demand, um, the competitive events poster, which was done by the competitive events committee. So that's awesome. And that's something um, that advisors were asking for last year. What I like about it is it gives you all of the different competitive events, whether you're in middle school or the high school one or the collegiate one. It talks about what's individual, what kind of test it is, what's your team events, what's your performance events, and so what things advance on to nationals. So that's a very useful thing. The other things that are useful for your classroom that you high school and middle school got in you know, their welcome kits was the NFLC, which will be in Columbus, Ohio. And then you flip it over and you have your NLC poster on that. You also see some things such as icebreakers and curriculum integration and different things that can help you as you work to put FBLA in your classes, especially at the high school level, because sometimes that's kind of a hard sell or it can be a hard sell. You really need to be able to you know, make the most of your time because we all know that teachers, your time is really limited. You have a lot of things to do. So the more that you can bring into your classes, such as maybe working on some of the competitive event reports, the more time that you'll have. The top five resources for you as FBLA advisors, and this is a picture of the welcome kit that you should have received. Number one is FBLA Connect. There's so much that you can do to help you with FBLA Connect, um, whether it be posting announcements, sending emails to your members, posting the minutes, there's many different things. So I would really encourage you to kind of just take a look at the different capabilities it had. Number two is that chapter management handbook. That is huge. That's one of the first things I would do, take a look at it. And the thing that's great about it is if you register your students, your officers or your members will have access to that as well. And they, it will be very helpful, especially to officers. 
course, number three, the posters and the welcome kits, because uh, when we looked at this, the thing that came through loud and clear from especially the high school and middle school advisors, they love those posters and they need those posters. They want to put those in their classrooms. Then it's the self-paced learning, the lead at the middle level, the BAA at the high school, the excellence at the collegiate, because not every student is able to win a competitive event. So this is another way that they can earn recognition. And finally, the competitions are academically aligned. And that really gives you um, the support to and the background to why you can teach it in the classroom. Moving on, your top resources for officers the promotional videos like the one that we just had that the officers made, that's really good for your officers to use, um, especially if they're using it as a recruitment tool to talk at maybe a meeting or to talk in business classes to promote those new members in. The digital flyers, there's everything from benefit flyers to scholarship flyers. So that's another thing they could use when they start planning with you those chapter meetings. Of course, one of the big ones is the monthly engagement, whether it's champion chapter or whether it's outstanding chapter for the collegiate. It has different activities that you can take part in and your members can take part in on a monthly, monthly basis. And that keeps them engaged and interested in FBLA. FBLA Connect is also important for your officers because that's how they're going to register for the BAA, but also that's how they can look and it'll say if they won awards, whether it's the BAA, the LEAD, um, if you're collegiate, whether it's those awards, or if you placed at national. So there's so many different things, and we'll talk a little bit about how to register your members for that because that's really important. It was interesting because when I was talking to the national officers when they were here for training, only about half of them had been into FBLA Connect. Connect. So that's one thing we really want to make sure that you get your officers and your members up and going into that. And finally, um, there's so many competitive event guidelines and resources. If you go to division competitive events, um, you'll be able to go to those resources and guidelines that will help your students and help the officers and even the members study for those competitive events. Of course, Tomorrow's Business Leader is our flagship magazine. It's published six times a year, and it has a lot of different things in it. This one happened to be the NLC program kind of slash TBL. But a lot of you may want to use it for your classes or make sure that, you know, during a meeting you go through some of the things because there's a lot of interesting articles. There's not only articles that would go along with business classes. There's also articles about alumni and where they are now. And the brand center is really important too. That's located on the website. It has updated brand guidelines, but more important, it has templates and logo assets. So whether you're looking for letterhead or maybe you're looking for PowerPoint mockups, this is where you can go. And then don't forget our FBLA shop at the top of our website. If you click on shop, it has a lot of different chapter supplies. Um, a lot of times for meetings, it's, it's really fun if you hand out little FBLA items. So there's a lot of lower priced items that you could do for that. But coming soon, we have a new holiday ornament. And I know students love those Crocs and apparently Croc charms are all the rage this year. So we have those coming up and a canvas duffel, kind of like if you think back to when you go to college and those big round duffels that we used to have. So I'm sure that those items will be the next hot items. So look for those to come soon. And if you have any ideas for us, please share ideas because we're always working to make sure the FBLA shop has the best and the newest things. Let's talk a little bit about FBLA Connect. Since right now we're really focusing on start of the year, getting those new members in. So let's talk about some of the different things. When you log into your FBLA Connect account and into your chapter record, it's gonna have your name. And one of the things you're gonna notice at the top, if Nationals does an announcement, for example, this one happens to be about champion chapter, we'll post an announcement and it'll be posted to the top of the page. And if you click on that announcement, it would actually have more details. This one in particular has the links to the one sheeters and the digital poster. Um, but competitive events has posted some things too about the guidelines. So there's different things from us we'll post and it'll always go to the top of the screen. Sometimes your state may post, but more importantly, you, and if you give your officers the privilege when you define their roles and responsibilities, they can post announcements too about your local chapter that only your local chapter members would see when they log in. 
The three main things that are really important, of course, managed membership will be 99% of the time because that's where you're going to select and register your members. But did you know that you could send emails just to your chapter members? You can send them to prospective members. You can send them to officers. So that's why it's really important to make sure that when you register your members, you click on send activations so they log into the system because once they have that active account, they can receive the emails. The other thing that you can do is there's a post event button and we have a calendar in there. So you have a local calendar where you can post events, a state calendar if your state uses it and the national calendar where you can see important national dates. If you have an invoice and you've registered members, it's gonna show in orange like this one for Portage High School and you can just click on it and it goes right to the invoice if you click on 2024 high school, national and state fees. You'll also see, and this is your primary advisor dashboard, to the right is where we've posted um, the champion chapter forms. And if you're collegiate, you'll see outstanding chapter forms. And a lot of people ask me, and we'll talk about this a little later, well, where's the documentation for what I need for these different seasons? You'll find all of the seasons there if you're high school. And if you click on complete form, that's where you're going to see the documentation. So it's going to have the due date. And once you complete it, it's going to show completed. If we go on to the next slide, if I went back and I went to manage membership, this is what your membership screen looks like. The terminology sometimes can be a little misleading. An unpaid student really isn't a student under invoice like we had in previous systems. An unpaid student is anyone that's showing up in that roster under the left. So they may not have been paid last year. I mean, but they just, when we turned them over, they were people that were affiliated with your chapter other than the seniors. We, um, at the beginning of the year, we graduated all of your seniors. So you don't have to do that, which is pretty awesome. So they're already sitting over in alumni and we've all upped all of your members to the next grade. If you look at each of these members, um, for example, under the unpaid, you'll see a pencil by the names. If you click the pencil on the student name, that's where you'll be able to edit them, like change the last name, um, edit, the, edit like um, the male, the female, if you want to do it, or you don't have to select that. You can put like NA in either one. So that's how you make changes to your student record. On this particular record, you'll see a dollar sign. Okay, the dollar sign shows up when that person is on an invoice that's been created. It goes away once the invoice has been paid. So if we go ahead to the next one, let's talk a little bit about invoices. This is what an invoice looks like. So it's always gonna tell you the status in red. This particular one is not paid. Up at the top though, what's cool, if you look at that arrow where it says void invoice, if you make an invoice by mistake, just click that button and it gets rid of it and it throws everybody back into the unpaid and you can select them again. You also have the ability to click share that invoice and share it with your bookkeeper to get that paid. You'll see the members on the invoice under membership status. If you click on a name, it again goes back to that member. So it's a quick hyperlink to that. And it's going to also break out your state and national dues. There's four ways that you can pay this. You can do a payment by mail, which is a check. Please do not overnight a check to the lockbox, though. They don't take overnights. We do want everything going to the lockbox, so plan accordingly. You can upload a purchase order. However, it does have to be the actual purchase order. If it's not, we'll reject it. And you can pay by credit card. The new way you can do it is pay by ACH. So that's the new way that we just added this year. Moving on, let's talk about members. So what does a member page look like? And when you click on that pencil on the member, and I would encourage your members once they get into the system to do this, they can upload a profile picture. So maybe you want to do this during a class period or even a meeting, kind of work with them and do a hands-on with that. They can see their name. Um, they'll see their membership status. So until they pay, everybody's going to start with an unpaid student. It's going to have the last time they logged in. So that's important if you want to check on, okay, have they really logged in? Are they reading my announcements? Are they doing the BAA? So that you'll be able to tell. It showed when um, they when they log in, they click on privacy policy. That's a requirement for a lot of schools. So that takes care of it. Once they do it, they never have to do it again. 
they also can put in their education history, several other things like a profile and things like that. If we move on, that was just a real quick overview of FBLA Connect. We'll have a lot more in-depth trainings, but one thing that's very important is the FBLA Help Center. So the FBLA Help Desk is located on the home page of the website at www.fbla.org. Once you click on the Help Desk, that brings you to areas like membership, conferences, programs, competitive events. If you click on those particular areas, you'll find frequently asked questions. For, and for us in membership, you'll find tutorials and how to's and videos. So those are all about FBLA Connect. If you don't find what you're looking for at the top of the screen where it says submit a request, that's when you're going to complete a ticket. It's very important to complete a ticket because as soon as they come in, I triage them and I assign them to people and it helps me keep track because our goal is to have a 24 to 48 hour return on that and an answer to you. When you email, it's not as good because we get a lot of emails in our system and a lot of advisors tend to not only email me, they email Katera, they email membership, they might email other staff members and that creates duplicate work and confusion because we don't know who's answering what. So please use the ticketing system. It's a very important tool and it helps me too because if a lot of people are having the same problem, that means that I need to explain it better or add up a new tutorial. Moving on. Let's talk about Champion Chapter. So again, Champion Chapter is in full swing. All seasons are up for the high school division. And this start, it started with Summer Starter. You'll see that it's a whole new look on the poster and the one pagers. It's a lot more friendly for duplication. Um, you'll be able to see each of the activities for each one and each season has 12 activities. But you'll also see that we've redesigned the digital badges. So if you look over the left-hand corner, that's the way the new digital badges look. So we have a new look. Um, the forms are in FBLA Connect again. And the first deadline for this one is September 25th. There's printed posters that went off in the, in the kits and the digital versions are also in advisor resources. For each season, if you choose, if you achieve at least 600 points, you receive the digital badge and the digital certificate. Somebody asked me the other day, well, does that mean that I have to do every single season? No, you do not have to do that. That's just if you want the digital certificate and badge for that particular season. For the recognition, that goes strictly by your points, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. If we go to the next slide, the middle school champion chapter, again, that has been renamed um, and reformatted, has a new look as well. And while the high school one really works on developing the program of work, the middle school version really helps you set your calendar for the year. So there's check boxes for everything in every month, again, on the poster. So I would recommend for both the high school and the middle school to have an officer check off your activities. But what's new is we've added important dates and sections on both the high school and the middle school where you can put state deadlines and local deadlines. And then we've also on both of those, on one side is the first part of the year and you flip it over for the second part of the year on the second side. So um, for the middle school, you get the digital certificates and the ribbons at the NLC and we still do the top 10 local chapters and top 10 state chapters. Middle, um, for the high school, they do the champion chapter banners for the 2000 points for bronze, um, 3000 for silver and 6000 for gold. Then we also do the top 10 local and state. If you move on to the next slide, Collegiate has outstanding chapter and that has not been posted yet. They're working on it and it should be posted uh, soon because they wanted to make some important updates as the programs have been updated for that. But this was really developed to be more like a project plan because that's what you're doing in businesses. So it helps you again as you develop the program of work if you're collegiate and it has some important things. But one of the things it does is it really helps you not only with your chapter activities, but also with the professional development of the student because it encourages mock interviews and things like resume reviews. Moving on, don't forget for Collegic, we have our two Career Connections conferences in Atlanta, Georgia, October 17th to the 19th, or Des Moines, Iowa, October 24th to the 26th. So it'll show those registrations there. And they also do have a Friday day pass. 
highlights are going to be business tours, resume reviews, business panels, um, lunch, networking. But you know, one of the things that's the greatest about this is the professional headshots. I don't know about you, but if you have to pay for professional headshots from a photographer that's a professional photographer, it can cost a lot of money. So this is like a huge perk of the Career Connections Conference. And that's important for LinkedIn. And as you're preparing, as your students are preparing to graduate and go into the workforce. For high school and middle school, we have one National Fall Leadership Conference this year, which will be in Columbus, Ohio. The registration fee is $115, but that includes lunch on Friday. But the highlights are two general sessions, and this year we're going to have open events, so that's a new thing. There's also two new tracks, a state officer track and a middle school track. And if we move to the next slide... Competitive events for the fall. That is so awesome having those open events for the fall because we heard from a lot of advisors that schools really didn't want to fund the National Fall Leadership Conference unless they were doing something like taking tests. So the Competitive Events Committee has added objective tests. So they will be on site at the NFLC on Saturday morning, November 9th. And um, the competitors must be pre-registered and you'll do that for the registrations um, through the registration for the test. One test per competitor, and but remember it is not qualifying for NLC. The top three in each test will receive a medal at the closing session. So, so this is new, we've never done this before. So this is really a new component, a new area for the National Fall Leadership Conference. So middle school and high school, we hope to see you there. One of the other things that's huge is our self-paced learning. And the reason why it's so great is we've aligned them with industry standards, career clusters, um, things that are really happening depending on, on the division. So for the lead level, if you're looking at middle school, you're looking at financial literacy, ethics, things like that. For the BAAs for the high school, you're not only looking at um, the contributor level where they're learning about FBLA, and I would encourage you to have every officer and almost every member, in my opinion, do this because it introduces you to FBLA. It also has an advocate level um, to understand more about ethics, the leader award, to tell them how to succeed, kind of time management, to the capstone project, which is great because you can certainly easily work that into your classes. So, and then you have the excellence award um, at the collegiate, so that's coming real soon, and they're revamping that, so they're, they're adding a lot of things to that program. So these are the three areas where we do have the self-paced learning because again, not every student wants to be in competitive events. Some, sometimes that's not their thing, but they still may want to get the recognition and here's where they can do that. The first of our huge national celebrations is American Enterprise Day. That's on November 15th. Advisors will have a digital guide soon that'll link you to some chapter activities that you can do. Um, but one of the big things that we're planning with the national officers for high school and collegiate is a student entrepreneur webinar where we have students from high school, students from collegiate, even if we have middle level students that are on a panel for that. And we'll have it moderated by an alumni who's also an entrepreneur. So this is something that a lot of our students, I think, will really look forward to. And it's something that you can really plan for and plan a watch party. You know, why not do that as a chapter activity and have some snacks and popcorn and just make it a chapter thing. Our partner programs are also starting. Of course, we have Life Smarts where they're learning all about budgeting and using their money smart. So the fall challenge starts in October and you can see the dates that it runs for the fall and the spring. The virtual business challenge, again, you see the fall and the spring dates and there's two challenges really. We have a virtual business challenge and a virtual finance challenge, which are really simulations. I know that I used to do the virtual business challenge with my students and that's a warehouse business and they're making all of these decisions and they can see over the period of when it, the challenge is, how they're doing and some of them, of course, are forget to figure in depreciation, some of those things that you're all teaching them. So it's kind of something that you can take for those accounting classes or their economics classes and expand on that. 
as is the stock market game. That's another way that you can build that into your classes. And the fall challenge starts October 7th. Students get from, you can do a team from one to three, it's $10 a team, but they get a hypothetical $100,000 and they're competing against students from across the country in the fall and the spring. If we're looking at additional partners, I love Lead for Change. It's a free leadership program. What more can you say about free curriculum, right? For sixth to 12th graders, and it teaches leadership skills about service learning. And service learning and service leadership is so important. But the great thing about this is if you use their program and your classes are in FBLA, you can be eligible to win grant money up to $10,000 for any community service project that you plan. So that's something to keep in mind. MBA Research also offers materials for teaching ethics. So that's provided to you as well at no cost. And finally, this one is new. SimNet by McGraw-Hill is an assessment platform that develops students for Microsoft Office. So these are all things that can easily go into any curriculum. We also have our fundraising partners, Fund to Orgs, Fundraising with a Purpose, Making a Global Difference. So you would have seen these guys at the National Leadership Conference if students donated the shoes because they reuse the shoes. And then we have InstaRaise, um, which simplifies your fundraising. And finally, have your, have your kids check out Men's Warehouse because they do offer a discount. And our newest partner is Alzheimer's Association. So we're partnering up with them to end Alzheimer's. So right now, if you go to the national page, then even if you um, put in the search Alzheimer's, it comes up with our FBLA page. And we've got already a lot of chapters fundraising. We're already at over $3,000. Um, I know we're just getting started and people can register for that. So you can help them out in a number of different ways. You can find your local watch walks and register or raise money. You can register a team. And the one thing that we're going to kick off is we're going to kick off a virtual walk to Anaheim. So you all have between now and May 1st to raise money on a local level and a state level for the Alzheimer's Association. And the national officers um, in September will be posting a virtual game board, gamifying it, making it a little fun there. And we'll be able to do things. And all the documentation you need is to register a team. So it can be a team for anything. You know, whether it's a regular walk, the virtual walk, a walk on your own. So think about that and check that out um, and look for more information soon. FBLA week is probably one of our largest celebrations and undoubtedly it's the most fun. I know at the local level, you all do your own dress up days and things like this, but we have set the theme days and it will be February 9th through the 15th. If you look here, we have an FBLA Week logo that communications developed a few years ago, which is great. But um, every year, the national officer teams for Collegiate and High School come in and they plan out the days and they decide on different theme days. So Sunday is Service Sunday. And one of the things we're doing on the national level for um, the national officers, because they'll be here broadcasting live and our national staff is we're actually going to have a team and we're going to do a regular walk. We'll probably do it on a high school track or something on Sunday. And we're actually doing our walk that day on Service Sunday. But if you looked last year, all the chapters across the nation raised over $43,000 on Service Sunday. So it just brings attention to the fact that we're also all about servant leadership as well. Marketing Monday would be marketing the business classes and marketing FBLA and recruiting those new members because, you know, a lot of times you have semester change classes, so it's always good to market to those second semester classes as well. CTE Tuesday is all about career and technical education. Um, maybe you can have an open house, but one of the things that the national officers want to do is they want to have a panel and they want to have people talk about, okay, what's it like to actually um, talk to senators and talk to representatives? How do you do it? How do you get a proclamation? Um, because you don't always have to go all the way up to your state or national government to get a proclamation. You can have your mayor sign a proclamation. They love having their photo taken with your students all dressed up in the professional attire. Why Wednesday is 
all about their FBLA stories. Everybody has a different FBLA story. Um, and it's cool because you can really, really post that on social media. And it's really amazing to find out why, not only why they joined FBLA, but how it's changed them and what they've learned. Thankful Thursday is all about thanking the advisors, you that spend so much time and dedication to that. And we want to take some time to tell you we really appreciate that. Fundraising Friday is tips for fundraising and helping you get to your state and national events. And Success Saturday finally is all about looking back on the week, kind of recapping the successes and recapping your successes, because at that time, a lot of you will go into your district or regional competitions. Make sure you promote that in your local and state newspapers. Competitive events, as I said before, the competitive events poster was part of the welcome kits and it's part of the digital welcome kit for collegiate, but competitive events have your objective tests, your presentation events, role play events, production tests, chapter events, case competitions, you name it, we have it. I think that's, that's probably one of the biggest things about FBLA is I always say that there's a competition for everybody. You know, if you're not into um, accounting, maybe you're into public speaking, or maybe you're into animation. So there's something for everything on that chart. So make sure that you post that poster in your classroom. But there's also resources available on that competitive events page for your guidelines, changes, competitive event description, and of course, those prepped resources, your sample tests and role plays. So join us on October 17th and join Jen for a competitive events webinar. Scholarships and financial aid, we know sometimes it's hard for those students to get those funds. Um, I don't know about you, but when I started my first teaching job, I taught in a small community and the students didn't even have money for business attire. So I had to keep a storeroom full of business clothes in different sizes. But this is one of the great things about some of the scholarships that have now come up. The Dress to Impress is... Um, $300 a gift card for professional attire that students can do because maybe they can't go to a competition because they don't have the professional attire. So we give one per division per state. The deadline is October 15th and that's already up. So make sure you have students apply. The NLC scholarship, the collegiate deadline is March 30th and the high school and middle school deadline is April 15th. It's a $500 scholarship plus complimentary NLC registration. So we give out 50 collegiate and 50 high school and middle school. So that's important too, because I know throughout the years, students have said they wouldn't have been able to go to NLC had they not won the scholarship because a lot of school, some schools may fund, but there's a lot of schools out there where the students have to find their own funds or, have, or they have to do fundraising to raise those. And finally, there's our own Distinguished Business Leader Scholarship. Uh, deadline is April 15th. It's a $500 scholarship that recognizes outstanding members. So we give up to two high school and two collegiate scholarships. This year for the first time, collegiate and high school are two separate times and locations. So the Collegiate National Leadership Conference will be in Dallas, Texas on May 31st through June 2nd. So we already have the registration fees up there. So if you're collegiate and you're already planning, you can put that down so you know how much you need to start budgeting. Members are 195, advisors, chaperones, and guests are 125. So registration opening and deadlines are specific. So that will be coming from the states. The conference is also now three days, so that's a difference as well. The high school and middle school conference will be in Anaheim, the Anaheim Convention Center, June 29th through July 2nd. So again, the registration fee, so you can start planning now, is $195, and you'll see the advisors, chaperones, and guest fee as well. And again, your communication for this is going to come from your state. But we'll also have for both the collegiate and high school conferences, general information on our website. Coming up in September, on September 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time, mark your calendars now. There'll be an education programs review webinar and a preview of our upcoming fall conferences, including the Career Connections Conference and the NFLCs. Do we have questions? I thought there was some hands that went up. Yeah, three people have their hands raised. I don't know if I can. 
see that. Let's take a look here. I can't see raise the hands that are raised. Can anybody see that? I'm going to scroll through and see if there's any um, open questions. It doesn't look like it looks like questions have been answered. Let's see if I can find hand raises here. You can add any questions in the Q&A portion. Can you go back to the slides for the middle school for NLC? Okay. And again, middle school and high school is together. Um, George, George had a question that he'd like to ask about BAAs and membership dates. George, did you have that question? Do you want to type it in the chat now? Was it answered? Okay, here's one too. Um, all right, here's some questions. Yay, we're not all silent. Tonight. <coughs> Lead awards, how are they recognized at the state and national level? So um, Jen Staley would like to answer this question live. So Jen. Oh, no, please go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> what? Putting me on the spot. So um, for the lead awards, the state, it's up to the states how they recognize those at the national level. They're recognized with the digital certificates. And then they're also um, recognized in the tomorrow's business leader. Will there be virtual officer training this year? Yes, there will be for sure a high school virtual officer training. They're planning it now and we'll have a date shortly. From Jody, for career connections, do members have to stay in an FBLA approved hotel? No, they don't. Um, you can you can stay in any hotel. We you know, we don't we don't book hotels for that. We give you suggestions, but we don't include that. That's why it's only a registration fee. Any other things? Oh, Jen and Lisa, I've already sent me an email with the question. I don't know how to turn on my mic. Oh, I already asked it live. Okay. Let's see. I don't have access to my email right now. So George, I'll email you back with that. If I don't know the answer, I'll certainly find it out. As a new advisor of a brand new chapter, what would you recommend to streamline and what to focus on first? If you're a brand new chapter, what I would focus on first is number one, um, get your officers elected. Uh, number two, make sure they, um, and we have a slide deck for this that I've done that you can show local officers um, that's very similar to this. I would really recommend that so they understand the different programs. And if you haven't done it already, sit down and maybe plan out one or two activities for each month. I wouldn't overload yourself. It's very, um, overwhelming at first for a lot of new advisors, I would take a look at the champion chapter because that gives you some ideas for activities to do. Don't do them all, just check some activities that appeal to you. Um, as far as competitive events, you know, sometimes it's easier to start with what they're interested in or just start with objective tests or things that you're familiar with. One of the big things that I can tell you, don't do it all yourself. Um, use your other teachers. For example, if you have somebody in a speaking event, go to the English teacher, have them help it, help you out. I'm sure they're willing to do that. Have parents help you out. The one thing I always used to do, which was great when I took kids to conference, I always had parents come along with me because they wanted to know what their students were doing. And then, you know, they acted as additional chaperones, but I always had the principal come too, because it's very important for them to number one, not only understand what goes on at a conference, but you're not going to have any discipline problems. If your principal comes along, I'll clue you in on that. Is the choose your event slideshow going to be updated this year? Jen, you want to answer that? Put the answer in the Q&A section. It will be updated in the coming weeks. Cool. 
is the welcome kit a hard copy or electronic? So we sent hard copies to middle school and high school. Collegiate wanted to have digital copies. However, we do have the digital resources in the advisor area, the resource center. Um, so you can get those same digital resources as well. Um, in the BAAs, the Leader Award says there are two options. The second one said it will be coming soon. Um, that I'm sure will be posted shortly. They're just working on tweaking a few updates to that. So Marianne, I'll circle back to you to help you through the process as a new advisor. One of the new things that I'm going to offer this week is one day a week, I'm going to post office hours so anybody can come in and I'll keep a Zoom open and you can ask me questions. So that would be a perfect time for new advisors, whether you want me to walk you through FBLA Connect or just get questions answered. Do you take students to both conferences? I see Jen's typing an answer for that. Are you talking about the collegiate and um, the NFLC probably? Yeah, I think at the collegiate, from what I understand, they're going to have one day where they may open that up to high school seniors. Um, so Jen's probably doing that answer. But for NFLC, your middle school students, I would take um, your high school students. They're, they're welcome to come, especially middle school, now that we have that middle school track. Because one of the, the great things that they get to do is the national officers actually run that. So they think that's pretty cool to be interacting with the national officers. We actually have a graduation ceremony after they go through the track where they have a pinning ceremony and they get an FBLA pin. So that's a great photo opportunity and they're very excited about it. So we also teach them how to do the official uh, official handshake too. So a little bit of everything in that. And the state officer track, if you do have a state officer, I would recommend that because you'll be able to meet state officers from across the country and do networking. What officer's job would you recommend for middle school? Well, if I was starting out middle school, I would, have a, I would have a president for sure. I would have a secretary for taking minutes and I would probably have a reporter. I would start with maybe those three because you'd want the reporter for doing articles and posting some things. I would recommend going to the digital chapter management handbook for middle school because it gives you different offices like the jobs and ideas on what you can do with them and some of the things that you can do for committees because that's one thing that's really important that officers can't do everything and you can't do everything but if you have committees like a community service committee or a fundraising committee your members can volunteer for that and you can run your projects through that and then everybody gets involved. So anybody that needs help building your FBLA chapter for sure um, Go ahead and I'm going to post my office hours on Monday and feel free, feel free to reach out because one of the things that we do as well as we do uh, step through tutorials for FBLA Connect or just if you want to talk or um, another thing that we do is the national officers do virtual visits so you can request them through Zoom and the form um, will be posted on the website shortly. I also do that as well. Um, so, you know, sometimes you can't always be there, but we can make the Zoom interactive and exciting. And sometimes that helps you with the new year as well. And I would really recommend for you to reach out for your states because state officers oftentimes are great and they might be close to you where they could do a chapter visit. There's nothing better than doing an officer installation or a new member induction ceremony and having a state officer as your keynote speaker. And make sure that you invite your administrators as well. The office hours, yes, will be posted. For fundraising, will, pe will people donate to our school or FBLA chapter name? Well, it depends on how you want to set it up. If I were you and I was doing fundraising, I would do it to the chapter, but I would talk to um, make sure you understand that how money works in your chapter or your school or how you need things labeled because every school is different. Um, so that's that's important to meet with your administrators right away. And I can't say that enough if for fundraising, you got to get on the calendar like now because everybody wants to do fundraisers. So you really need to, if you haven't already, meet with your administrators and get some get some items on 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 the calendar. Do we have other questions? Well, if not, you can still reach out to me by email. My email is L Smothers, L-S-M-O-T-H-E-R-S at FBLA.org. 
So you can do it that way. I'm also on the website. If you look under the staff, you can find my email that way. Or again, my office hours will be posted starting on Monday. And I'm here to work with all of you. I used to be an advisor, so I know what you're going through. But it can be the most rewarding experience for you as well. Oh, Marianne, I have 121 students who will be joining FBLA. Each student needs an email address when they register. Yes, that's a really good question. It's very important to have their email address because especially when they go to the National Leadership Conference, we send them things and they can't vote if we don't have an email address. The other thing I would really stress is that we really recommend personal email addresses. School email addresses can be a real pain. Um, sometimes they're whitelisted. If your students graduate or sometimes during the summer, it's not working. So if they don't have an email account, have them do a Gmail account. If your school doesn't let the students have email accounts, then use the parent's email account that they can have access to. Um, so that's really important because the other thing is, is that if they don't have email accounts, they can't log into FBLA Connect, so they can't do lead or they can't do the BAA. So anything like that, it's really important. And yes, they can use their parents' email, but they would need to have access to it because especially if they're voting. Um, but I know that uh, a lot of schools, they have a lot of rules about that. But again, check with your school and see. Um, check with your tech person too because our email comes from fbla.org, email at fbla.org. And so if you use that and tell them not to whitelist it, sometimes that's a way around it too. But again, if at all possible, please have them use their own email address. That's really the best thing in this system. The other reason why it's so good is that when your seniors graduate, they still have their FBLA Connect account. So if you wanna bring them back as an alumni, you're gonna want their contact information too. So again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a great membership year. And again, contact me if you need anything. Have a nice evening, everybody.